All right, Neil, Penn State bounces back from the Minnesota loss with a 34-27 win over Indiana. Look, the defense didn't play well, and we're going to get into that, but they did enough. They regrouped. They didn't let Minnesota beat them twice, and, and, they, and they had got the win going into the Ohio State game. Yeah, you know, they uh, have not started well two weeks in a row. Um, you know, when the offense has been coming from behind and, and taken a lead or, or pulled in the case of last week, uh, pulled uh, within one one score, the defense is immediately allowed a touchdown. It certainly didn't finish today strong with letting uh, Indiana hit a 48-yard pass uh, down to the five with the game. You know, the game was already lost, but it did. they did not – and strong, and I'm not really sure what it is. They're playing a lot, a lot of people on, on defense, but um, they did win the game. They allowed 27. Uh, their offense typically is built to score more than that. Uh, so here they are, they're nine and one. But I do think they have some things, particularly starting faster, that they have to get better at coming into Columbus. And we're going to get back to the defense here in a little bit when we preview the Ohio State game. But uh, a nine minute drive yep. to seal the deal here. That's very impressive. How many times over the past few years have we talked about Penn State in its four minute offense can't get those couple of first downs to finish the deal? Today, nine minutes, a couple of fourth down conversions, they go for it and fourth and goal at the one. That was an impressive finish. Yeah, and you know, James Franklin, he, he gets a lot of knocks for his in-game coaching decisions uh, and general ability. He's generally looked upon as a, you know, a star recruiter who's not as good on the day of the game. Well, you look today, uh, you know, they break out Will Levis in a kind of a new wrinkle and they use him uh, in key situations. They make the decision to go for it on fourth down. They became a power team there. Flip over to the other side, they ran a fake punt, which really, really hurt Indiana's momentum. Indiana's out of timeouts at the end of the game. Penn State managed the fourth quarter really about as well as it, as it I don't want to say it, it ever has, but certainly as well as it can. K.J. Hamler gets hurt, though, and they play a good bit of the game without him, and they still won, and that's impressive. But I'll tell you, the receiver story has just become a big issue. He is such a factor. And their run game was good today. But this team, when K.J. Hamler is is either out or, or minimized, I, how did the rest of these receivers pick up the slack? Well, I think the one guy that they've gone away from, and I don't know if it's a desire to continue to feature K.J. Hamler. He got hurt, I think, on a kickoff return. And you know, I think they've overused him at times, particularly on the kickoff return, which is a high injury uh, type of position. It's one thing about catching the punts and, and being a, a wide receiver, but Dodson's a good player. He was a good player last year. I think they ought to stick with him. Uh, they moved him in to uh, the punt return role as well. So I think he's a reliable second option. Beyond him, though, uh, you know, a lot was expected of shorter. We really didn't see him get too many snaps today. Well, that was probably probably his, uh, his penalty for last week. Yeah. But even Daniel George is in there. Uh, Chisena, they have not thrown to very often. And Indiana kind of bracketed uh, Friermuth. So that took away uh, some of their passing game. All right, so they've got Ohio State next week. And this is a chance to win the Big Ten East, get to the Big Ten Championship game, which I think if Penn State beats Ohio State, I think they would go to the college football playoff. I, I just think the way – and they win the Big Ten, it, it would shake out that way. However – I think Ohio State's just going to destroy this defense, to be honest. I don't, I don't see this Penn State defense, the way they've looked the past two weeks, being able to do much against Ohio State. Well, you know, it looks like they've been a team that ever since they became number four in the country hasn't quite lived up to that billing. Uh, I think it is a concern that, you know, they were leading the nation in sacks uh, halfway through the year. They had 10 against Purdue. Uh, their defensive line has been pretty quiet. You know, have they been looking ahead around the corner at Ohio State? We'll see. Um, you know, Ohio State has really uh, – had their way with just about everybody. Penn State will be a two touchdown underdog. Um, hey, you know, Penn State's gone out there many years and not played well. Uh, the, the, the bar will be high for this team to at least prove that they belong. They've got a shot at their own destiny, and that's all you can really ask for. Um, and I'm not trying to you know, be a Debbie Downer here, but Minnesota and Indiana just destroyed this defense throwing the ball. And I, I just, it's hard to fathom what's going on on that side of the ball. And if uh, if if 
you're going to struggle like this against Minnesota and Indiana. I, I just I sh shudder to think well, what Minnesota, Ohio State. I'm not do. trying to make excuses for him, but Minnesota had a great pair of wideouts for sure, and the quarterback had a tremendous day. And this team generally plays Penn State tough by passing. Mm -hmm. I think the onus will shift to Penn State's offense. Okay, this is a veteran offensive line now. Uh, they're going to have to keep Ohio State off the field to have any chance. Obviously, their defense is going to have its hands full, but I think the onus is also shared by the offense and to be able to create some ball control. Uh, and again, you know, you don't have Noah Kane. Uh, it's questionable about Hamler. So, uh, but I think some of it is going to have to be they're going to have to stay on the field offensively. Yeah, no question. All right, a big one next week. It should be a lot of fun. Neil and I will be there. Max Jordan doing our video. We'll be there. We'll have it all covered for you uh, online and in print. And, hey, no matter what, you, you got a chance. And, and that's all any team can ask for. Hey, right? you're 9-1. They would have signed up for that at the beginning of the year. I think almost everyone. And I want to have a shout-out to uh, Military Appreciation Day today. They did a really nice job. Cam Brown with the flag. A lot of military songs. Noon start. The atmosphere was still pretty good. All right. Thanks for tuning in to our video.